All right, welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing time so far. Our next speaker is Deep Sogani. He's Managing Director, Enterprise Data and Analytics at FedEx. Please join me in welcoming Deep to the virtual stage. Welcome Deep, how are you doing? Hey Dan, thank you for having me, I'm doing great, how about you? Oh, it's, uh, it's our pleasure to have you here. I know our attendees are raring to go to get you to talk about supply chains and its complications. So without any further ado, we'll go ahead and jump into the first question. Patrika, if you would toss that up on the screen. All right, supply chains are changing rapidly and there is lots of hype around robotics, inventory management solutions, demand optimization tools, and of course, predictive maintenance techniques. Is all this new technology worth the hype in your opinion, Deep? You know, it's, it's a fact that technology is changing supply chains across the world at an ever increasing pace. You know, gone are the days of dumb applications that were run by simple case statements or if then else logic, you know. In times to come, intelligent data-driven applications would be ubiquitous and would be embedded deep into operations. Um, yes, new and innovative technologies get introduced all the time and they follow a you know, typical hype life cycle where they are touted by vendors as the best thing since sliced bread. This leads to inflated expectations from them. Then this is quickly followed by consolidation in the industry where a bunch of vendors fall by the wayside or are gobbled up by the bigger fish. And then uh, a few key players emerge. You know, finally the dust settles down and the technology does find its stable place in the tech stack. So over time, you know, a number of such technologies have also impacted supply chain industry and we have all been for the, for better, we've been better for it. Take a robotic process automation or RPA, for example, you know, after going through that initial hype, it is now being broadly adopted and is changing supply chain and logistics by automating repetitive and time consuming tasks, such as scheduling preventative maintenance or initiating purchase orders to maintain inventory and, and so on. It is important, I feel, for organizations not only to be aware of these emerging technology themes, but also help shape them if they can, and especially if they show enough promise to help reach new customers or markets or to increase operational ex excellence, right? Take blockchain, for example. It has tremendous potential for global transportation industry. For example, by allowing an immutable chain of custody, it enables shippers like FedEx and even law enforcement agencies like Customs and Border Patrol to establish the provenance of goods and identify counterfeits or illegal drugs and so on. So FedEx realizing this took a lead along with some other key players in the industry and founded BITA or Blockchain in Transport Alliance, I think in 2017. It's the largest commercial blockchain alliance in the world with, with nearly 500 members and um, over in, in over 25 countries. So bottom line, if organizations stay abreast of these emerging technologies and keep exploring their applications and use cases, then they can seize you know, competitive advantage at the right moment. I'd like to give another example. You know, for years, FedEx has been a leader in sensor-based logistics. We had been working on a Bluetooth-enabled low-energy sensor that would be lightweight, compact, and would transmit precise package location in real time. Now, in September 2020, we announced its launch, branded it as SensorWare ID, and it was just the right time to start using it for tracking COVID-19 vaccine shipments, where it proved to be a critical differentiator for us. So, you know, talk about the right technology for the right times, but this is not luck alone. This is years of preparation and effort in maturing a technology. Important thing is to, of course, move beyond the hype and look at business value driving applications of a specific technology. Great, thank you so much. That was really interesting. Patrika, let's go ahead and jump to the next question. Okay, here we go. How can AI be leveraged within supply chains to create value? Examples, please. Okay, well, um, AI is here to stay and there are a number of ways in which the supply chain industry is leveraging it. If you look at the uh, 2021 Gartner technology themes for supply chain, you'll find more than half the themes are directly or indirectly related to AI, such as digital twin for supply chain or embedded AI analytics. 
or augmented data intelligence and so on. Uh, one of the most important trends here is digital twin of the physical supply chain. You know, FedEx is at the intersection of the world's digital and physical supply chain networks, which is an extraordinary, so extraordinary opportunity, I would say, for innovation in this space. Now, in late 2019, we announced DRO or dynamic route optimization, which uses near real-time data to optimize route planning and make predictions regarding the right vehicle mix and workforce to accommodate anticipated changes in package volume and sizes and so on. So as you see now, data is driving the physical supply chain and the decisions related to physical supply chain. Gone are the days when the digital footprint lagged behind the physical network. At FedEx, one of our operating principles is, up, is innovate digitally, under which the data-driven digital twin is actually proactively informing and driving the physical supply chain. Uh, talking about another facet of this, AI and analytics now is embedded right into enterprise business applications, uh, thus delivering this real-time ML-based predictive prescriptive intelligence, um, even the interactive data visualization right into the business applications and UI. Uh, one very important area that is benefiting from this, uh, that is embedded, embedded in analytics is in customer care. You know, natural language based or NLP based voice analytics or text analytics. These tools allow us to gain a much better understanding of voice of customer. Uh, social media listening, sentiment analysis, capabilities like this give us customer feedback that was never available, right? Um, all this and then applications such as virtual customer, customer assistance like chatbots or IVR applications are now being used to take this customer experience to a whole another level. Um, then we're also using AI technologies to create models related to customer lifetime value, predicting customer churn, and, and so on. Since we're talking about supply chain, physical fulfillment area is very important, right? And as you can imagine, AI-based technologies are big in supply chain in, in that space. Uh, for example, advances in autonomous vehicles and drones are creating new innovative methods for delivery. FedEx Roxo is a delivery robot that is being tested for same day deliveries within cities. Then FedEx has also teamed up with Neuro for its next generation autonom autonomous delivery vehicles for doing last mile deliveries. Then in the areas of drones, the first commercial residential delivery was actually done by a drone um, in, in by, uh, FedEx in 2019 in Virginia. That was the first US commercial residential delivery and there, and to do that, FedEx teamed up with uh, uh, Bing Aviation, and those trials are still going on. Uh, switching gears a little bit, uh, similar to the idea of smart factories, you know, hyper automation is driving creation of smart hubs and package sorting facilities for us. Uh, convergence of AI, ML, robotics, automation, all this is helping us create these hyper flexible and almost self adapting facilities. Uh, for example, uh, imagine with the help of powerful image analytics, robotic arms can identify and pick up packages in various shapes, sizes, weights, and place, their, place these on the appropriate belts. And that's, that's happening as we speak. Uh, all this is really driving a lot of value in terms of optimizing operations by making them more safe, more reliable, more efficient. So application of AI in our critical industry, in our industry rather, is a critical driver, I would say. Cool, thank you so much. Really appreciate the details you were able to provide there. Patrika, why don't we jump to the next question? All right. How do you approach shaping the data and analytics environment for FedEx? I know this is right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, great question. You know, exactly 40 years back, our chairman and founder, Fred Smith, had famously said that information about the package is as important as the package itself. In that sense, data has always been in our DNA. You know, the digital twin that I spoke of has been there to reflect the physical supply chain in motion. It's been responsive, it's been reactive, but now the need of the hour is different. As part of our digital transformation, this digital twin is becoming more proactive and less reactive. This digital twin is utilizing data to prescribe the future, not just describe the past, right? In that sense, it has started driving the physical supply chain. So this data-driven business agility, if you will, is the keystone of our data and analytics strategy. 
you know, over the years, like everyone else, we've also built a number of data stores organically. These disparate data silos that we have today are going away, giving way to as much as possible unified, seamless data across the company. Uh, the industry is using the term uh, pervasive data intelligence or something like this, and agrees that this is best achieved in the cloud. Now, our journey in public cloud is driven by our partnership with Microsoft, whereby you know, we, we announced an offering called FedEx Around last year. As we speak, FedEx Around is lighting up our physical network by allowing businesses and enhanced visibility into their supply chain by leveraging data for near real-time shipment tracking, for building intelligent operation centers, sometimes referred to as control towers and so on. And while FedEx Around and associate offerings are built in Microsoft Azure Cloud, our strategy is essentially multi-cloud and hybrid cloud where it needs to be, right? For a multinational like FedEx, which operates in over 200 countries around the globe, distributed data is a reality and data complexity is huge, uh, you know, given not only the data diversity itself, but also the data localization needs, data security and data privacy regulations that we have to comply with across hundreds of governments and regulatory bodies. So we, we take a data fabric view of this complex data landscape. You know, the data fabric is a modern approach to integrating di distributed data. Data fabric requires a lot of technology, of course, but the real goal of it is to enhance data interoperability and make the business's use of the distributed data more seamless, more agile, more valuable, and so on. In, in the AI world, data strategy and data availability is also increasingly becoming more critical than algorithms. You know, without the availability of the right data at scale, algorithms are of no use. That's why this holistic data fabric view is so important to us. You know, when we, when we think of data analytics environment in FedEx, our philosophy is also solid core and flex edge. Um, master data management, enterprise data lake, enterprise information warehouse, data governance and data stewardship programs, a centralized metadata hub. These are all examples of centralized capabilities we're building and running at the core as part of this hub and spoke capability landscape that we're building. Then there are edge ecosystems, which are equally important too. You know, these are the gateways where a lot of data capture, data processing and operational analytics happens at the edge. Uh, clusters of IoT and communication devices such as SensorWare ID that I mentioned, or RFID, imaging systems, smart 3D cameras, they all operate at the edge and they carry out a lot of data processing uh, at the edge where they operate. You know, the, the core that I talked about and the edge together shape our hybrid cloud strategy where you know, our critical systems are both in our on-premise data centers and, and facilities like hubs and, and sorting facilities as well as public cloud. Great, thank you so much. Patrick, let's jump to the next question here. Okay, so that was an enormous amount of information. I really enjoyed hearing about it. So when you're thinking about all this stuff, what tools do you leverage as you build the data infrastructure for successful AI? And actually, I think earlier you talked about vendor relationships sometimes coming into play, but not always. So really interested in your thoughts here. Yeah, um, you know, as a company, we are keeping data at the core of our IT systems model and, and we fast becoming a data first organization. That, what, what does that mean? That means that data is not just an exhaust of application integration or a mere byproduct of enterprise architecture. Data architecture is a core tenet that we build, uh, that we use while we build business applications. So this means that as we do this, do, do our app dev work, we keep data analytics as a key use case. And many of those use cases are actually AI driven. Uh, for instance, uh, routing applications that take real-time weather and traffic events into account. When developing those applications, we, we take into account the data analytics uh, use cases. Now, for building our data infrastructure, as I said, data fabric is a key concept, right? Uh, this is accomplished through a combination of data integration, data virtualization, and data management capabilities that creates a unified semantic data layer. So what this provides in a sense is a layer of abstraction from the underlying platforms. And that layer of abstraction is very important because it makes our AI applications platform agnostic and being able to run in 
any cloud or on premise you know this also allows for what is called federated learning which means that global ai models run at the core while hyper focused models run at the edge doing localized learning right uh, in terms of implementation the data fabric that i mentioned is both a logical and physical construct uh, logically it's like a mesh bringing together all the different ways of getting to the data using a metadata driven strategy in that sense our data fabric includes all kinds of uh, delivery styles and, and tooling that supports those delivery styles such as change data capture or incremental data capture data replication messaging queues streaming the data sql access api based consumption you know and what have you so um, as i said it's very important um, that all this be metadata driven you know here we are building an enterprise metadata hub which is like an enterprise map of what data resides where across all of fedex what is it what does it mean what does the data mean and how do you get access to it so you can think of it as catalog of catalogs you know this is like this this in fact is the cornerstone of our data governance and data stewardship strategy and and the one place where we build value added services like business glossary knowledge graphs features like enterprise data search and so on from an ai and ml standpoint also this is this is this is very important because this connects to our api registry and model registry so we know which models have been built for what kind of business problems and using which api you can connect or you can connect your applications to use those models right um then talking about other core services we are uh, you know we our, our enterprise data lake strategy as i said is is uh, is really a federated virtual data lake that promotes collaboration between different operating companies across the globe and the regions you know while maintaining autonomy and agility at the edge um talking about data our, our data infrastructure some other capabilities we are leveraging our uh, you know automation of infrastructure provisioning and and management using iac or infrastructure as code you know this also plays into our larger strategy of data ops which is about devops thinking applying uh, to apply to data analytics applications uh more specifically in the area of dsml or data science and machine learning ml ops is very important in order to enable our data scientists community we have built an ml ops framework that supports model development model deployment model management and avoiding model drip and all of the other components of model life cycle management so all in all we we feel that um, you know uh, for ai for successful ai self service analytics and data de data science democratization are both very important and our data infrastructure actually promotes those great thank you for all that uh, information really interesting to hear patrika let's jump to the next one here okay great all right so let's talk about challenges what prevents successful ai production and how do you tend to overcome it in your work yeah you know if you want AI to work well, it is necessary to consider the key critical business drivers and to create a strategy on how AI can add value to those areas. Without, without that, you are like Alice in Wonderland, you know. So we we need to be very clear-minded about the processes, the business processes that we need to improve, and what the success criteria are for AI implementation in those areas to be successful, right? Because incorrect expectations lead to a lot of disillusionment in this field all the time. for example are you are you willing to live with the risk of false predictions or false positives you know in my in my previous work experience i i worked for a home security company where we built a great model for uh, telling the monitoring team if if there's a false alarm uh, but if you predict if it's a false alarm and no crime is happening and that is not that doesn't turn out to be the case and there's a loss of life or property that's just not acceptable right um, that's a world that's something we could not afford so the cost of false negatives was a was very high uh, that thwarted the adoption of the of the of that specific model you know then there are unintended consequences all the time we know about we all know about ibm's decision to not sell general purpose facial recognition technology right or the the, the fact that microsoft has also made a similar commitment in not selling its facial recognition technology to law enforcement should it lead to things like racial profiling um airbnb recently found out that one of their algorithms that that had the potential to decrease racial disparities in earnings 
actually ended up doing the very opposite. So some of these failures happen because the models are only as good as the data, right? So data fidelity is a big issue. Missing data can lead you to false conclusions. Um, as you know, data preparation uh, is 90% of the work in DSML and it can be very challenging due to incomplete or inaccessible data, huge data volumes, poor data quality, or even lack of data understanding. Uh, another issue is that data science work, you know, such as NLP or deep learning, it's very resource intensive and can be expensive. You know, provisioning these resources in your on-premise data center, like you know, provisioning GPUs or graphical processing units can be very challenging. And, uh, and so in many cases, cloud is the way to go because cloud offers the elasticity you need in spinning up and spinning down this needed compute um, for your needs. Now, um, deployment and usage of models also at scale especially is also an issue. And gaps can exist from model training and algorithm stage to model deployment stage. Um, and, and that's why I mentioned uh, things like MLOps or CICD pipeline that allow us to deploy these models at scale, um, model lifecycle management with regular model refresh to avoid model drift. Uh, finally, interoperability issues with consuming applications at the edge. All these are issues that otherwise plague productionization of, uh, of artificial intelligence applications. Um, also models, is, models are just a part of an end-to-end -end ecosystem that, need, that needs to be built and nurtured. Top management strategy, top management support and funding is needed to nurture this ecosystem, right? And uh, finally, one other aspect, you know, availability of talent to do this work. Organizations need access to internal and excellent talent, right? With the right skill sets to support AI work. Uh, the good news here is that technology has helped bridge that gap to some extent with tools like AutoML available in Azure or Google GCP. You know, th these, this AutoML does a lot of hard work of picking the right algorithms. And though not perfect, they are good enough for a large number of use cases. Uh, and this is one of the factors leading to the democratization of AI, which means that AI is no longer the, you know, the exclusive preserve of subject matter experts or PhDs that it used to be. Instead, it is increasingly now within the reach of users in various roles, various skill sets, and so on. So I would say that in conclusion, AI is great, but of course, it's not a miracle, right? We have to be very intentional about building it and utilizing AI in the right uh, organization context. All right. Thank you for all that knowledge. I really enjoyed hearing it. So we're about out of time. Any final parting words to a supply chains professional, let's say, who's listening to you and saying, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> what do I do now <laughs> before we go? Yeah. So as I, as I said, I mean, you, you don't have to be a PhD in this space. Uh, democratization of AI means that a lot of this is work that you can do. Um, of course, you need to build some basic skill sets um, uh, in um, in computer engineering, in data engineering, for instance, um, to be able to do this work. Business knowledge is also very important because unless you have the right business knowledge and the business acumen, you can't really ask the right business questions for the for the algorithms to answer, right? And if you define your business problems wrong, that's just a wrong start to this whole process. So build some basic skill sets in terms of software engineering and so on. Build a good business acumen. Um, you know, talk to your manager to provide you the environment that you need to nurture AI. Because as I said, management funding, management strategy is very important um, to, to pick up the right use cases. Uh, and then, you know, you're off to the races. All right, thank you so much, Deep. Over to you, Patrika. Wow, thank you, Deep. That was awesome. And thanks to Dan for keeping us on track with those questions. Deep, we really appreciate your time today. And I know this virtual audience is giving you a huge virtual round of applause. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you thank very much. Thank you.
Great for the to be audience, with virtual conference. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're happy to have you. And for the audience, it's time for you to make your way to your next session. Along the way, make sure you accept your connection request and take some time to check out our amazing exhibits. Thanks so much, and we'll see you around.